In this video, I'll go over good dimensioning practices and I'll start with the rules of dimensioning. These rules are pretty important because what we're trying to do is dimension in a way that it's very readable for everybody to understand exactly what your intention is with the dimension. So we don't just get to dimension any way that we want. If you follow these rules, literally anywhere around the world, people would understand your intent of your dimensions. So it's not all just, I think it looks like this, this will be okay. So kind of pay attention. Some of these are really important because it will cause uh, extra confusion in your drawings. Uh, first of all, don't duplicate dimensions. So only dimension a feature one time. Second one is don't crowd the drawing. Leave space between the object. So when you're dimensioning, you know, give yourself some space. couple of things that we're trying to do here. One is obviously dimension, but also when someone looks at the drawing, I'm going to be able to see what the shape is. Like this one's a mess in lots of different ways, but just way too crowded. It's easy to move dimensions. So if you click on the dimension, those are called grips. Just click on the grip and then you can pull the dimension out. And what you want to try to do is line these up. So find a place where, <coughs> excuse me, where they're going to and hit enter, um, click on, oops, I've got to hit escape, click on that one, pull it out to where it's lined up, and we can, we can zoom in and do a better job than that. And then this one, see how it, the text actually came up outside. You, it's easy to move that once it's in place. Hit escape to get out of that one. Uh, if I click on that grip by the number and then pull that down, I can put it down in between the leaders and I'll click on it again. And I'm going to use this grip to bring it over and line it up with there. So now my dimension, that's still a little bit crowded. Isn't it? So again, it's easy to move these. Escape twice to get out of that. Oops, didn't quite get that one. There we go, hit escape twice. So that looks much better, a lot easier to read. You can see the shape of the part. So don't crowd the drawing, keep your dimensions lined up whenever possible. Make it easy on the person reading the drawing. Uh, the third one says dimension should be placed so it's not necessary for the next person to do any math, to add up numbers, to try to assume what a dimension is, those kinds of things. There's a perfect example. I know the size of each of these steps, but I don't know the overall height. You say, well, they could figure it out. But the reality is you should always, for one thing, you should always have your overall dimensions on there. Now make sure your ortho is on. If your ortho isn't on, you're going to get these weird diagonal dimensions. So turn your ortho on. I'll keep your dimensions linear. So that way I know the size of each of the steps and I also know the overall height there. Avoid crossing dimension and extension lines. So, you know, I could have a dimension like this. Problem is it's a mess. All these crisscrossing of the extension lines and dimension lines make it very difficult to read. So again, just arrange your dimensions in a nice, neat manner like that. It's a little bit too close. So it's very easy to read the dimensions. So dimension should be centered between the arrowheads unless you're stacking them. So see how the number is, if you look vertically between there and there, uh, it's kind of unusual to have a dimension like that, unless you have a space issue and then it's okay. So these should typically be centered. If it does interfere with something else, now if you're having a problem with, with moving stuff around, turn off your ortho, I'm sorry, turn off your object snap temporarily because sometimes the object snap is going to fight you and try to make it attached to stuff, but don't forget to turn it back on. If you try to dimension without your object snap on, you're not going to be able to grab on to the features. So keep your object snap on usually. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> now these next three are, are really important because I see these mistakes made a lot of time and um, I want you to pay close attention to those. So number six is don't dimension to hidden lines. Now when we start doing multi-view drawings, you're going to have hidden features on a part. 
don't dimension to a line that's going to be a hidden line. A hidden line represents some part of the object that you can't see from that view. So don't dimension to hidden lines. Find a view where you can see that feature as an object line and dimension to that. Uh, the seventh one is do not dimension on the object or on the part. So it's tempting, especially when you have, for example, here's this hole here. It'd be really easy just to put that dimension right there. Don't dimension on the part. It's very confusing as to what the object looks like. Plus, a, an extreme situation is you could send this file to a CNC machine and it would actually cut out that number because it thinks it's part of the object. Right? So it's very easy, again, to pull your dimensions outside the object. And that's what you want to do. It's okay that the arrows go through. That's totally fine. But don't put dimensions on the part or on the object. Uh, let's see, the eight, eighth one is overall dimensions should be placed the greatest distance away from the object so that the intermediate dimensions can nest closer. I've already talked about this. So your overall dimensions should be farthest away from the part. So my overall here, I'm going to put that out there. And that's because, let me move this out of the way. I'm going to need to locate this hole, for example. So I'm going to need a dimension that goes from there to there, so I need to have space for that. So and then you can always move this back in a little bit, but keep your longest dimension farthest away, your shortest dimensions cl dimension closer in to the part. Uh, the ninth one is about, uh, these, these next rules are about dimensioning holes. So holes should be dimensioned in the view that shows the feature as a circle. In this case, it's perfect. Again, we'll start doing multi-view drawings where you're looking at the side of a hole and it doesn't look like a circle. But try to dimension in the view where it looks like a circle. Now, the dimension tool is very smart. If you click on that and you click on that circle. Now, be careful you don't click onto one of those object snap things like the quadrant. But if you click on the outside of the circle, it knows that it's a hole and it, it'll go ahead and put the diameter note. And again, we'll pull that outside the part. That's one of our other rules here in a second. Uh, holes should be located by their center lines. So see that center mark? That's where you want to know. You want to know if I have to drill this hole, I need to know where the center of the hole is, not the edge of the hole. So there's two things you have to do whenever you have a hole in the part. One is call out the size. The other is call out the location. So I have the location from the side to the center, and I need one more dimension, and that's going to be from the bottom to the center. And again, if the dimension looks like that, it's okay, but it's cleaner if you have, let's see, turn my object snap off. It's cleaner if it's in between like that, actually. Okay, so now I, I've located from that corner to the center, from that corner to the center. I know where it's located, I know the size. So use those center marks. Whenever you dimension a hole, it will automatically put the center mark on there. Uh, let's see, in general, circle is dimensioned by its diameter. So if it's a complete circle, it's going to have a diameter call out on it. If it's an arc or a radius, like a fillet, if you have a rounded off corner, let's put a fillet on here. Let's put it on this corner here. So if that's rounded off, now I'm going to use the dimension tool, but I'm going to now you have to zoom in on these or it won't be able to know what you're doing. Um, and you'll know when you get, there we go. See how that um, arrowhead pops up. So just zoom in on it and it knows that it's a radius and you'll get a call out like that. So R is going to indicate radius and we always use that diameter symbol. Okay, so again, just zoom in on it if you need it to show that radius. Uh, let's see, leaders should be sloped at 30, 45, or 60. So basically, th so these are leader lines. They should always be on an angle. Now, we're not going to measure them, but the idea here is it shouldn't be, leaders should not be horizontal. It's very confusing, or near horizontal, or vertical. That's really confusing when you have your leader lines. Let me turn off some stuff here. It's very confusing to have leader lines that look like that. They need to be on an angle. So shoot for something like a 45, 30, 60. Okay, it makes it very easy. Um, if you're really concerned about that, try to make them have like the same general kind of angle. Not that critical, but it makes a nice, neat kind of drawing. 
So as you know, sometimes I'm turning these tools off to pit as I need them, but usually I'll run with those things on. So those are my rules of dimensioning.